Well, I'm called the house organist, but uh, it's more of a house music lover. It's, it's always been the role of the house organist to provide uh, music for a, a wide variety of events that can happen in a theater. In the days of when this was installed, the organist accompanied silent movies and would usually play a solo feature sometime during an evening's enter entertainment. And then uh, it would be vocalists. Usually vocalists could sing a solo with the organ. That was a traditional uh, form of entertainment. But nowadays, uh, here at the theater, you know, people get married in the theater. So I might have, I might be playing a wedding ceremony or people might have a dinner on stage. I mean, there's all sorts of creative things that, that we do here at the theater. And uh, if someone needs background music, while this is a big, loud musical ensemble, it can also be a very subtle, quiet uh, musical ensemble. So it can be used in a lot of different ways. The Wurlitzer Company characterized these as unit orchestras. They really didn't, you hardly ever saw the term Wurlitzer organ, perhaps if they built one for a church. But uh, the unit orchestra was a, a different kind of animal than your typical church organ. Um, it was designed to replicate the sound of an orchestra that played popular music in theaters. So you have a lot of uh, sounds that by themselves are a little bit unusual. And then rather than trying to build a careful sculpted sound that one would get in a church or, or concert organ, this is more of an orchestra. It, so you have very individual tone quality. I was the house organist for a very long time, from about 1976 until 1987. Now I'm Tony's alternate at the organ. However, I have bragging rights on this. During a meeting with Brett Batterson, I said, we were talking about the restoration of this organ. Okay, and I said, here's what you need, and handed him the first donation and the Orpheum ran with it. And here we are. It was installed to take the place of a nine-piece orchestra for matinees and many other shows so that an orchestra would not have to be employed all the time. And it was also used for solo work and for other sorts of entertainment. This organ's been lucky. It's been used a lot since silent movies went away. So it's very lucky to still be in its original theater and have been heard by a great variety of Memphis, Memphians all through its history. A theater with an organ in it takes one person to make a show. Anytime we were trying to impress somebody while raising money to renovate the theater for the first time, if I was around, you had a show. I could sail up out of the pit and playing beautiful music, and people were impressed. And all it took was one person, because the organ is part and parcel. It's built into the building. It's just as much a part of the building as the chandeliers or the movie projectors. It's really Tony's skill, Tony Thomas's skill as an organist and his artistry that has made the organ sound as good as it has sounded for the last few years when he's been organist, because he had to work around a lot of things that weren't operating. When the organ left Memphis, uh, approximately a third of the ranks, notes of, of, or pipes or other infrastructure relating to the ranks or sets of pipes, were what were called dead notes. You would play a key, and so certain notes just would not play. Uh, so the hardware had really come to its uh, stopping point. And then uh, the relay system, which is with the electrical control of it, finally just gave out. In fact, uh, uh, our historian and other organist, Vincent Astor, was doing a program where the thing finally just quit. 
and I, it wouldn't play. And so it, things were pretty much at a standstill. And we had lots of what are called wind leaks, because all of these pipes are making their sound from wind, which is generated uh, by a large blower in the basement of the theater. And uh, you could hear rushing wind uh, coming out of the pipe chambers, all these places that had leaks. So all of these mechanical problems had to be addressed to where we got all of the parts of the unit orchestra playing again at all the pitch registers, and all of them attractive and you know, essentially noiseless. I mean, no pipe organ is totally noiseless, but for an instrument like this, uh, which is built using very high wind pressures, that's how you get the big volume out of only 739 pipes, is that extra wind pressure gives you more weight in the room. So, it was a night and day to get it back, have every sound working and in its proper position was like a, a dream come true. Thank you.